Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Whatever you have, if you do not have peace, you are not free. No matter what you have. Jesus said, my peace I give you. There are many things in the Bible that God gave man without his request. One of it is his peace. He said, this type of peace, the world cannot give it. I speak peace to every heaviness. Peace to every worry. Peace to every stress. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace to every storm in your life i want you to know that god is alive and god is in control peace to your spirit let every heaviness let every depression give way the peace of the lord garrisons your heart tonight in the name of jesus christ god bless you please be seated please be seated sometimes we just get lost in worship these extended moments of worship are very very powerful because many things happen in worship i was preparing to minister a program it was a worship program and while i was meditating the lord gave me a revelation about the woman with the alabaster box and the lord told me that perfume is not the only thing you can put in an alabaster box whatever you do not want to see you can carry it and put it in that box and take it to him you can put your pain in the box you can put your worries in the box because everything presented in that box never returns to you and so it's not only your crown that you give you can put your pain you can put the worries and break it before him and say lord know what to do with it i have handed this over to you hallelujah it's a powerful thing to really be in the presence of god my prayer for us is that we continue to value his presence that we get to a point where we begin to see the relevance by every standard and from every dimension to see the relevance the profitability of dwelling in his presence hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord it's good to be back home let's get to the word i'm happy to be back it's been a very stressful month already and we bless the name of the lord for the privilege to take his life and his word around the nations let the name of the lord be glorified Jesus name and we thank God for the remarkable things to you be all the glory in the name of Jesus the Lord put what I'm about to teach you in my heart since last month I was just waiting to allow the set time to just discuss it with us everyone's and again, the Spirit of the Lord, Pastor Shago, it's good to see you again. God bless you. Thank you. Everyone's, and again, the Lord would come to check our level of spiritual progress. You see, 
believers are likened to a house that is being built the bible says we all as living stones that we are being built into a spiritual house and it is the responsibility of the holy spirit to check and meticulously vet the construction to make sure not only that the house is built well but that everything that should be captured inside that house is well represented are we together so god would come every once and again to our lives and find out the areas where the testimony of jesus is not yet established and he will build us up this is why it is powerful to walk with the holy spirit if you really walk with the holy spirit your life will be complete and balanced if you see him building you in a dimension and you see that there is a lopsidedness you just be patient with him very soon he will come and pick up that side and you become an exceptional trophy very balanced very accurate One of the things about dominion, I've been looking at this and even in my external ministrations, I've been talking about it, that we need to understand the dominion systems of the kingdom. We need to understand, that's, that's not what I'm talking about, but that if the saints, remember the Bible says that we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and then he says by them we reign in life it is god's desire that the church enters her glorious destiny experientially and that will only happen when dominion is established are we together now i told you that it is against the law of the spirit for a man to glorify himself so you will lift another who brings you glory you don't glorify yourself in the spirit so it is the son that brings glory to the father and then the church the ecclesia in partnership with the holy spirit glorifies the son but then how is the church now glorified are we together now it is in subjecting principalities and powers and the elements of this system bringing them to the obedience of christ that is how the glory of the church the bride is seen so jesus glorifies the father the church in partnership with the holy spirit glorifies the son then the dominion of the church within this sphere of god's kingdom is how the church is glorified are we together now so it matters to god that the church that we not only continue to learn and grow and fall down and stand up but that we sustain the intelligence and the empowerment two important things the intelligence and the empowerment to rise to a point where experientially the church of the lord jesus christ will not only advance in terms of communicating the gospel of the kingdom but that we get to a point where the dominion of the church is recognized across the sociological strata of human existence and will continue to strive to make this happen in the name of jesus and i've taught us you know different messages put together that there are systems for dominion please listen carefully there are many indices that you put together to measure dominion the ability to exact sovereign control over a territory and one of it at random in no particular order is influence i've taught us the power of influence that kingdom advance does not just happen through evangelism alone but through influence say influence i'm teaching you now say influence influence is very important and believers must be mentored and cultured to see the relevance of kingdom influence influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your values to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about god and life without using force or cruelty it's called influence are we together now that you get to a point where you can cause a territory to value what you value 
to prioritize what you prioritize like Ruth told Naomi your God will be my God your people will be my people so you get to a point where you exert a level of pressure on people to bend and subscribe to your values and your ideologies but you do not use force you do not use cruelty you use something called inspiration influence thrives on inspiration the flawlessness of your results compelling people to see the excellency of modeling their lives after the results that they seek which they see in your life the church will never be able to do much if we ignore influence because you see in this world that we live in at every given point someone is influencing you and you are influencing another person are we together now yes if we ever frown at the decadence that we see in our society the decadence did not come by personal indoctrinations it came by using certain people who are called gatekeepers of certain mountains to demonstrate and market that value so strong that an entire territory within a short period of time can buy into that conviction are we together now yes nobody just sits down for instance and loves to be gay I'm just using as an example except that someone who is in a position that can inspire is empowered both by hell and the gatekeepers of this cosmos to market an ideology that would have been ugly if it were marketed by someone with no influence so usually the devil will find people who have um, their inspiration worthy and then he will incorporate that flaw in their life so that they will sell that idea and we receive everything hook line and sinker because they stand in a position where they can influence our thinking the church needs to be influential remember the dream of king nebuchadnezzar that daniel interpreted daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands he was interpreting the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold, the chest and the breastplate of silver and all of that, that were representations of many kingdoms that will come. And then the feet that was mixed with clay and iron, a type of many systems incorporated in one and daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands it arose and crushed that kingdom then the stone became a mountain a stone became a mountain a strata of influence and then he says that a kingdom was given to the saints and that that kingdom cannot be destroyed and that kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and Jesus now comes to say that kingdom is called the church he says I am the builder of it the rejected stone the chief corner stone now becomes a mountain and becomes a kingdom a collection of people and an invincible force that will crush every kingdom the Bible said it the king had the dream and Daniel interpreted it and it will happen in the name of Jesus Christ so we need influence we need a lot of it one of the other elements that we need to be able to exert dominion I'm just giving us the foundation so when we say we should walk in dominion it's not just a vague talk of authority no there are certain specifics that must be in place if the church is to dominate are we together one of it for instance is spiritual empowerment there cannot be true dominion until that individual is empowered the psalmist said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills and then he asks a question he said from whence cometh my help that means the issue of help is mandatory it's just that people outsource help from different dimensions others can outsource help 
from sorcery and witchcraft others can outsource help from education and um, our secular enlightenment others can outsource help from relationships and human connections and then the psalmist said for me oh, I can't speak for everybody but my help cometh from the Lord the maker of the heavens and the earth are we together so it's established that nobody rises and commands dominion unassisted you must be assisted by a dimension that is beyond the three-dimensional realm so every time you see someone exerting dominion in any sphere of influence at all there is no need guessing whether that person has been assisted or not if at all you care to guess you will want to just guess the source of the assistance not that that person was assisted it is impossible to walk in dominion unassisted are we together men are helped to be great men are helped to be blessed if you ignore the spiritual assistance that we call empowerment God's token of his presence and might upon your life granting you access to possibilities that should not be affordable to you by human standards that's what it means to be empowered to be engraced with an energy with an ability that only God should have so that you command results that are not given to mere men and then the third is wealth there is no dominion without wealth it is true the wealth of the kingdom is an index that empowers the church to command dominion and when I talk of wealth I'm not talking of just cars and houses that's 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 not wealth that's just maybe a level of comfort but that, that's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking of a dimension of divine supplies that can force any closed door that is shut by the economy of this world to be opened. Are we together now? These are the forces among others. There are many others that must be engaged in our lives and corporately as a body. 90% listen please 90 percent of the pursuits of men and women on earth today is an attempt to make a meaning out of their lives to make a meaning to try to put ends together so a father is rushing to get a job and you ask him sir why are you so busy and he tells you look i need to get um school fees for my children i need to pay rent i need to do this and that and there's a businessman running and i mean helter skelter you wake up in the morning and you see people run from morning till night and you ask them what are you looking for and some say survival some say we're making ends meet and so on and so forth and you know there's there seems to be that contention everywhere left right and center please listen very carefully you see if you follow the way of the Lord please listen to me the Bible says there is a way that seemed right unto a man it could be a way that has been established by philosophy and the pride of men I hope you know men are arrogant it's what God has had to put up with us for many decades the the pride of men in spite of our ignorance it's amazing how arrogant men are and then at the end we have to turn back and say Lord I need you how many times have people ignored God in the Bible based on whatever they think or they thought was an advantage and they were forced to return to a point where they would call upon his name and acknowledge him so when life defines a pathway for you to follow listen carefully just because a crowd is following that pathway does not mean that way is right are you listening to me now the courage to walk with God is what many people do not have because this system wields a level of pressure on you this is how it is done 
this is how we make money this is how we become famous this is how we do this and you know that the holy spirit is telling you there is a way i can route your life and destiny such that you will do much in in so short a time and have the time to lift up the name of the lord and glorify him you see let me tell you something the system that was designed by satan was designed by a lot of intelligence the system was so designed that you must lose certain things when you follow it one of the things you must lose is joy one of the things you must lose is peace one of the things you must lose is god one of the things you must lose is everything god gave you so you you move and take that path and check my peace is gone where did it go to and satan says continue going and then you find out my joy is gone and then you find out my relationship with god is gone the 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 the, the progression was designed to strip you of everything divine and to reward your giving away these valuable things you get stipends that you call success you call stipends the accolades of men while they clap for you for getting a and b you have lost the things that really matter and after decades of moving in ignorance you will turn back and find out you really didn't have anything you were better off before you started following that path are we together now our world is full of very angry people look at the young people who are angry right now they turn back and look at their lives no money no joy no peace you have children as if you should kill them are we together now because you don't know what to do with them the needs are much they bring pta letter and you are angry you have a church you don't even know what to do it's not growing you go and copy a formula somewhere and say we must apply it this church must grow and you try it and nothing happens and you give your best and the members lash back at you and you turn and say god did you design this thing and god said i have no hand in this because jesus said i am the way listen carefully that you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it now but the challenge is this many believers do not have the fortitude to sit down and be correctly mentored to follow the path that will lead to life and power usually usually a combination i think of operations of darkness tampered with our pride the pride of men we hate being taught we want to show we know we we feel embarrassed when we are educated because it looks like it's an insult on our pedigree are we together now so usually we like suggestions but not to be taught and say look this way you are following is wrong let me tell you this i i say this with all humility i have watched people take steps and i already knew where they were going to end it's painful when you already know where a road is going and someone is still following it i have seen people take steps and make choices that i know the end of it is going to be disaster except the mercy of god intercepts somewhere in the way they are going to fail and they are going to fail woefully now this sounds like pride you see i've been saying this thing for many years i didn't just start saying it this system will never allow you serve god it's a promise i am giving you you follow this system the world's way of doing things you will never live a meaningful life have you seen the rate at which people commit suicide someone would just hang himself and write a letter i hate life i was reading um the the online paper just today about a woman i think somewhere in nigeria who killed her husband killed the children and killed herself that's the way high blood pressure used to be sickness for old people but now you see teenagers having high blood pressure and you wonder what <laughs> excuse me what they are thinking about that's life for you and satan continues to manipulate the system 
to ensure number one that you never have time for god i hope you know that the number one attack of satan is your spiritual life listen to me carefully in that order when satan begins to launch an attack it doesn't matter where it comes from ultimately because if he can cut your ears away from the voice of God, that's the supply of your life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. And if that word is cut away from you, you have started dying, even though alive. Every attack on your life has a way of routing to your spiritual life. So the Bible says we should be steadfast, immovable, are we together now to get to a point where you are solid that nothing will offend you that you will not find offense in God to say God I'm disappointed in you I will try another strategy I, I I trusted you to do a and B in my life you have come to a point where your love for God is as solid as Mount Zion many people's spiritual lives have been attacked every day every time per second per second satan uses all the elements in this life poverty pain offense disappointment are we together delay all kinds of things and he keeps targeting your spiritual life and goodness is he getting at people rubbishing people so much you see everyone i'm trying to make ends meet um it's time for prayer prayer what please god is here let's 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 do this thing first and we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow because that was not the formula assigned to bring us rest there remained a sabbath for the people of god but until you walk with the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord of the Sabbath, to be able to guide you and show you the systems you must access. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, men can find rest in experience. Do not allow the personal frustrations that you have faced on your journey to fulfillment and relevance make you believe that God is incapacitated. No. My life and your life can never be a perfect reflection of his capability. He doesn't bend to our standards. We must subscribe to conform to God's standard. If you are poor today, it's not a reflection of God's inability to bless. If you are not influential today, it's not a reflection of God's limitation. Are we together? If you are not anointed to a notable dimension, it's not a reflection of God's inability to reach you. There is somewhere in that equation you either do not understand or you are engaging wrongly. That's why we are here to learn, to be taught. To be guided to see that there is a path that truly leads to death not spiritual death physical death but there is a path that leads to life is god speaking to someone already and so i just want to press on an issue with us that i think god would have me talk to us on tonight um so that we can have the time to serve god I title it, it's a very brief message, my cup runneth over. I want to share with you the dominion systems that God has put to help men activate the supplies of heaven. I pray, pray for me that God will grant me grace to finish on time because I really want us to pray. I want us to spend a few minutes praying. The greatest distraction I have seen in the lives of believers is this issue of our daily bread. The issue of trying to make ends meet. And the rate at which believers are being distracted by the worries and the cares, especially as regards our needs. There has to be a system to address it. If not, a time will come when on Sunday churches will be empty. A time will come when you will organize crusades and you will find people saying, look, I, I have four jobs because I'm trying to make ends meet. I, my, my child's school fees has been increased to by times five and I have to make sure ends meet. God, please wait. When I make it, I can come to you. 
and if you disturb me I'll come with a seed and sow it to you Psalm 23 Lord may this message bless your body in the name of Jesus This is how I read this scripture. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Verse 3. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Uh huh. Yea. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Five. Thou preparest a table. Just leave that verse. This is what we are dealing with tonight. Thou preparest a table, not a sword. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Here is the miracle thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over may that be our testimony in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god that your cup will run over transgenerationally that you will get to a point where because of you it will be that you have brought light you have brought salvation and empowerment to your loved ones I believe that the greatest attack on the body of Christ will come in the area of divine supplies. Supplies for kingdom advance. It is no news that God wants us to be able to have the level of overflow and abundance. And this is not in some carnal, um, self-centered way. No, we are talking kingdom here. Are we together that it is the will of god please listen very carefully to bring us to a point by his grace where we access the supplies of heaven that can afford us the opportunity listen carefully to be able to spend our lives by spending our time serving the lord remember the teaching that i did here on time certain things about time that we need to learn that all that you have in life is time are we together now that means whatever you give your time to you have invested part of your life to are we together now yes that our lives are time dependent and whatever you commit your time to is what you have given your life to and so satan knowing the value of time has manipulated a system that compels the average person to commit most of his time on mundane pursuits so that we do not have time left to serve the purposes of the kingdom and advance the gospel and lift the name of the lord so it's not the issue of poverty or prosperity or abundance or lack is a fight for time satan is targeting your time not your pocket he's using your pocket to target your time because he knows that if he can create a system around your life where god is not prioritized he has captured you the time of the average believer is spent worrying is spent thinking of needs here and there and i want to tell you categorically it is not the will of god you will never be able to serve the purposes of god that way as a man of god it's impossible to have the time to settle down and prepare a quality sermon well researched with prayer to bless people when there are all kinds of concerns where will we get the fuel for the generator where are we going to rent the keyboard many people lie as if it doesn't matter it does matter when your landlord comes knocking at your door you will be surprised to see how it will influence your prayer life are we together now 
that zest and have you ever been in a situation that gave you concern you lost appetite has that happened to someone that you sat down you are not sick or you are fine but there's a plate of food in front of you and you cannot eat because you are worrying you wake up in the night and you are stressed out are you not seeing that death is killing us give us psalm 112 this is god's idea of a man of a family that is a true representation of his of his abundance and his supplies it says praise ye the lord blessed is the man that feareth the lord take note one that man fears the lord number two he delighted greatly in his commands so that's the secret of that man that that man is blessed go back to verse one he is blessed because he fears the lord and he delights greatly in his commands verse two says his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the upright that means that the impact of that man transcends a generation the generation of the upright shall be blessed verse 3 says wealth and riches shall be where please talk to me believers that wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of that wealth and riches his righteousness endures now this is what you cannot get with satan if you ever get wealth and riches this way your righteousness will not endure because it will force you to dapple your hands in all kinds of things that by the time you are 10 years in that voyage you have lost so many things wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of it his righteousness endures the bible says that man is blessed he fears the lord and he delights greatly in his commands his seed his seed there is not just his children your seed is anything that comes out of you that his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and then he says his righteousness endures forever i have taught extensively on the systems of the kingdom that are allocated to bring supplies and to help believers to come into a point where we experience the abundance that gives us the time and the convenience to serve God are we together now uh, I've said it again that most of the issue when it has to do with the supplies of the kingdom wealth riches and abundance is that number one most people approach it from a carnal and ungodly perspective is is from a standpoint of lost so the entire exegesis around the subject of wealth is coming from a heart that is already depraved it's not a heart that truly wants to honor God it's just a heart that wants to grab and get and so it's largely a marketing of lust but that's not the way of God number two is that there is as I will always say an imbalance in the communication of the precepts that leads to it so we have preachers who communicate their ideas on what they believe is the kingdom system allocated the economic system of the kingdom and they give the best that they can communicate and then you find out largely that from many of those teachings the members don't prosper from it it is usually the preachers that prosper from it because the members appreciate the preachers for teaching them but they go back and since they themselves don't have congregations to appreciate them there is nothing for them to return home with and they are angry and frustrated and then they now begin to write all kinds of devilish things about the gospel and about men and women of God and then we have on the other side entrepreneurs and business people and all kinds of people who bring all kinds of ideas about wealth and that is wonderful and well-meaning but some of these things are a mix of of Scientology and some of it is even a mix of all kinds of ancient religions and things that reduce God to become energy and just reduces God to become a force just like many other forces so by the time you dwell and explore those things your conclusion about God would just be that God is some kind of sovereign energy in the cosmos who can do something to your brain and so on and so forth so there is largely an imbalance 
my question tonight is what is truly the way to accessing the supplies of heaven is God so wicked my brothers and my sisters that he will leave us in the dark and watch us move in pain and in the financial squalor that continues to press people down to a point where there is not enough even for our children it says if you have been evil know how to give good gifts to your children if you have been evil in the depravity of your heart yet you can create space for compassion to be able to look at your child and bless your child let me give you a guarantee i promise you in the name of the lord jesus christ if you listen to me you will never never be poor if you listen to me you will never be small it's a guarantee i give you in the name of the lord forgive me if i sound arrogant but it's true just pay attention to this thing don't 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 tamper with the equation when you don't have results get results first then you can say oh you are wrong i discovered another route this teaching is a symbol of god's mercy because there is a tsunami coming it has started it's sweeping everywhere and everything close to it and it's unfortunate that there are many believers that might be victims of this that we will never get to a point where we begin to eat our children do you know women eat their children in the bible to eat your children now doesn't mean to eat your child physically that you can mortgage the future and the destiny of your child so that you satisfy your hunger of today you have eaten your child many of our parents ate our destinies let me tell you the truth they ate our destinies in selfishness there are many people today in marriages they should not be but the parents say you must enter so that we will eat that's eating your child there are many people who should not be involved in certain things at all there are many pastors who should be in the field serving the lord they are somewhere roaming around forcing supplies to come from where it's not found I will never serve Satan to feed my stomach. I will never serve Babylon to feed my stomach. It's a vow that you must make that my entire life will be spent serving the purposes of the kingdom. I will never serve the Lord and quote scriptures and fall down under the anointing only to stand up and become a victim of a system that will define for me how much time and space I give God. I'm not going to be talking so much about the spiritual principles we understand. I just want to pick one of the subjects that the Lord put in my heart and drum it into us and then we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Increase in the kingdom increase in the kingdom increase in this kingdom is a product of value write it down increase in the kingdom the greatest gift that can happen to a man is to be shown the systems and the ways that construct your life to become valuable please listen very carefully the law of value your value defines your degree of usefulness please write it down your value defines your degree of usefulness the degree to which you are needed within a civilization within a sociological context the degree of your usefulness not just your uniqueness not just your skill you can have skill that is not useful to the context of a civilization 
the degree of your usefulness is what we call your value and God so designed that the supplies of heaven are routed listen carefully the supplies of heaven are routed through the medium of value that when God wants a believer and one who is a citizen in the kingdom to rise to a point where you begin to access the riches and the blessings of heaven he does not just favor you as it were with giving you money but he brings you to a pedestal in life where it becomes impossible to ignore you are we together now there are many ways he achieves that but that the gateway into accessing the supplies of heaven experientially is becoming valuable now but most people most of the teachings on value does not capture the full import of what makes it rewardable it's not enough to know that your value is a measure of your usefulness just because you have something that is useful to me does not mean you will be rewarded for it there are many people carrying useful things but are not rewarded for it they are valuable yet they are not rewarded is that true so what is the system that translates your value to compel the environment that you live in to come gentiles coming to your light and then they are kings to the brightness of your rising get this tonight and you will thank me tomorrow i've taught you here that your value decides who pursues you it's true your value decides who pursues you you know you are valuable by the extent of demand that is placed on your grace, on your skill, on whatever it is that you represent. Now, most believers will frown at what I'm saying. That's why they are poor. That's why they struggle. We pray and that's very important. We study the word. We are faithful in church. But we do not understand the systems allocated to bring us out of this qualo of hardship many of the things we try to address are symptoms of one central deficiency value in the area where value plays nothing will cover for it are we together now so your value is a reflection of the extent of your usefulness and i've taught you also that who pursues you determines the magnitude of your reward it is not just because people are pursuing you the quality of people pursuing you is also the quality of the reward that accrues to you if a president needs you you will be rewarded at the level and at the stature of a president is that true yes how can I call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way no way because Ever present help in time of need. You are my God. Do you know that when you become valuable, you will command dominion in a way and manner that will not only bring God glory it will bring glory to you it will bring glory to your family you will bring beauty and glory out of your life when you become valuable pegged at a level where your usefulness cannot be ignored pegged at a level where every other factor to downplay your usefulness becomes inconsequential that you rise to a point where not gender not geographic limitations
cultural barriers etc that none of these things sustain the ability to be reason enough for men to ignore you that's value value is not that you have something that is is being biased by loyalty so i have something that only my tribes people patronize and they're only doing that just because they had that my name reflects that and they, oh you are from this state and okay let's come and buy this no when you sustain an ability and you peg yourself at a pedestal in life where regardless of what else is not important in your life people ignore it because of the necessity of what you carry you are valuable it was said about jesus all men seek for you not some not yoruba people seeking for a yoruba man not Igbo people seeking for a Igbo man not northern people seeking for a northern man this is largely what we call value in our world so if i have value now i just quickly go and look for my people and say i'm the son of the soil your boy has come with this if you leave me like that and so we have a crowd of people it is it's largely just ethnocultural but that god puts something in your life my brothers and my sisters that will cause all men regardless of value nobody will ever ask you where you come from they don't care whether you are male or female nobody cares whether this water was made by a male hand or a female hand nobody cares whether once you are tested to the point of death you say let me have that water whether it was made by a child or an adult the moment people create certain factors to demean you you are not valuable enough if any other excuse is worthy enough to frustrate you then you are not valuable if you listen to what i am telling you your children will bless you tomorrow years ago the holy spirit would tell me pay attention and let me make you valuable i didn't understand the extent of what he was saying oh today i'm grateful there is no magic that is going to happen in your finances let me repeat there is no magic that is going to happen in your finances if you do not trust god to take you to a point where you become extremely valuable i give you a guarantee in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god as far as accessing supplies by yourself here on earth is concerned you will live a frustrated life it's a matter of time and i'm not talking of business here or a job here mm -mm. leave all those things first you see it is your value that gives life to those things they don't give life to you many have not been taught that part of the ministry of the holy spirit in our lives is not just to help us know god it's not just to help us walk in character the holy ghost upgrades men he came into our life to build us to a point where we become valuable the bible says jesus increased in wisdom listen carefully jesus increased in stature jesus increased in favor with god and with men the holy ghost does not come into the lives of people and then reduces them to a point where the only thing useful about them is their knowledge of God no sir is God speaking to us tonight value when your world comes to you they watch to see what it is that you have in your hands that you are going to exchange for the reward they have you are valuable when no amount becomes regrettable to commit to you when no amount becomes that means nobody would drop something and turn back and say i was stupid for dropping one million i just came i know pastor alpha is anointed but ah, ah, one million what entered me no when nothing in this world becomes worthy enough to reward what you carry you are valuable with beyond imagination and this is where god is taking us to because let me tell you if you have that even if you are inside a hole i guarantee you you will not beg for bread i hope god is speaking to you you see i love you that's why i'm telling you this the devil will tell you don't mind him 
then make sure you don't have children make sure that you 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 are not the one who will be taking care of your relatives do you know how many well-meaning believers who love god are still asking god questions till today lord this is unfair my father was a pastor my mother was a pastor i'm a preacher i love you with all my heart what is all this one that i'm seeing now 90 percent of the discussion in homes is money finance madam what are you bringing you are hiding money from me the man says you are you are you know and all kinds of things and god is watching he's saying this time is supposed to be prayer time have you seen families doing devotion in the morning and the father stops say what, what devotion are you doing and he picks a scripture by himself just because he wants to quarrel somebody who is not bringing resources and devotion that is supposed to be a time of love and fellowship ends up becoming quarrel a lot of people accuse pastors who steal church money and you see the truth is that except god shows you the way out otherwise this thing will press you one day you will touch what you should not touch hello please talk to me don't trivialize what pressure can do in the life of a man when you are pressured to a point where you are pushed to the wall you will be surprised at the compromises you will be able to make we are losing believers per second per second because of poverty and what it can bring did you know someone sent me a text one time and told me that the whether they wanted to give the person a job god is my witness but that the person who was helping to facilitate it said they have to pay two hundred and fifty thousand naira before they will get the job i said so do you have the money he said no she was whether i think it was a she coming to just say if i can if god can use me i said no god doesn't use me for those kind of things god does not use me for those kinds of things now it's easy to criticize them and say you mean you love god and you are doing that until you find out that a family of 10 people is depending on one person's pocket to eat it's a cause it's not the will of god imagine for instance that i tell them to give me a bucket now and while i'm preaching i just i just say if the bucket comes close to you there's something written on the bucket just read it and do whatever it says look at how your mind everything i'm saying would just go down because i'm passing a bucket you look at the bucket and look at what is written on it and just shut down and say what is all this again but do you not know that it is capital intensive to lift up the name of jesus the name of jesus is heavy it takes resources to lift it up did you hear what i said the name of jesus is not a feather you throw it's heavy it will take the shoulder of priests to take it up it's easy to accuse men of god around oh i like koinonia they don't ask us to give anything we just come and enjoy we enjoy free dinner and they pay money and we, i like this kind of ministry other pastors should be like that uh -uh. don't be quick to criticize my brothers and my sisters if god does not show you the key to this gate you will stand there and almost die we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in our of you you will never walk in integrity if you don't have supplies i guarantee you in the name of the lord you will never walk in integrity life will push you to a point where you must compromise you will preach something you didn't preach 10 years ago because you have found out that in that message now can come a way of helping your belly value now but you see the value listen carefully my brothers and my sisters just being valuable is not enough 
you must ensure that that value is needed and useful within the context of your civilization this is as simple as it is that your value must be needed listen pastor come let's assume you are selling this and i don't need it now i'm passing you have this i'm just giving an example yet i don't need it will i reward you are you valuable is your value useful to me no do i need it no so you will still suffer although you are valuable that's what is happening to many of us there is almost nobody here that i know who has not recognized something that is valuable and just because we found it we start rejoicing and we believe life should just come and bless us no sir there is a standard that demands reward because the me who is moving around me too i'm looking for something with my resources and until I find the person with that something to the standard I consider rewardable, that is the only condition for releasing things. It's not enough to be valuable. Your value must first be needed and useful. Second, your value must be translated to a form where it is served with excellence. Excellence that relates to every level of mental development. Did you hear what I just said? That your value must be translated to products and services that are served with excellence. An excellence that can be able to be satisfying to any kind of level. That means that the value you provide and the excellence attached to it may only be able to serve people who are middle class. That level of excellence may not suffice for the great who do not think price are we together now so there are many of us who are doing things but that what we are doing i give you an instance our daddy is a prof here are we together now now if you are a graduate they are not going to call you to go and head an institute of something with all kinds of benefits accruing to it because you are a graduate but not graduate enough you have not graduated enough to sit there so the problem is not that you are not a graduate but you are not graduate enough the question there is enough to the standard are we together now the person who takes last in a race I hope you know he has a time too that he finished but he did not finish at enough time to get the gold medal the question is not that they finished the question is there is a time allocated and whoever can beat the time is the one who gets the gold so it's not enough to say you are valuable as a man of god let me come back to ministry because many of you as and leave all those things let's talk ministry so let me talk ministry as a man of god it's not enough to be called you can be called you can feel anointed in fact quite honestly you can be anointed but is it to the level that can bless the people who god told to bless you because for every destiny helper there is a standard of grace that compels his resources to answer to you god can tell me or god would have put in my spirit to give pastor alpha a car provided he heals my mad child are we together provided he does what not provided he prays in my house the condition for that reward is that whoever can come with the level of grace that can take away madness in that house so i'm anointed i know scriptures and i come to the house and i roam around and i just pray and at the end of it they just thank me they put malt in a bottle with straw and they put donut and they escort me with it outside and i go it's not that god did not send them your level of value did not make it fair for that answer to come to you that means when i sit in a meeting and grace is coming on me god is lifting me to the standard that can match the helpers 
so that their resources can now come to me are you getting what i'm saying now listen very carefully everybody who will bless you tomorrow is already alive today your level of grace has not risen enough to call them that's why they are shifted to your tomorrow if you enter that level of grace today they will come today i look at my life today and i see what people do to me and i'm almost tempted to ask where were you where were you when i was sucking ginger inside a straw and i was a believer are we together when i was trekking to first bank without money in my account by faith hoping that i will get miracle alert now you are receiving it free it's just coming there was a price God has authorized Pastor Alpha. This is your prayer request for the next level. But your value is here. It cannot match until you are lifted to the level that matches it. And so the Holy Spirit has the responsibility of upgrading the saints. Please listen carefully. Upgrading the saints to a level where their usefulness becomes worthy of being rewarded by any standard are we together now that means pastor alpha gets to a point where someone will sit down and think with his wife and the lord will say kai build one of my servants a house why don't they think about you because they don't think it's fair to give you that kind of house now remember they know you are called but they think it's unfair. They believe that there are more rewarding ministers in terms of impact, kingdom impact. And the spirit of God by himself will take their minds to those people and say, that's the man you should bless. Please believe what I'm telling you. Yes. We've had people, my brothers and my sisters, I, I say this to the glory of God. We've had people live and travel from other nations and other cities to Koinonia, not for the program travel with seeds and they said they sat down and agreed either as a business enterprise and say no since we love god and before we started this business we agreed that god should grant us grace so that we'll bless others and they leave their cities take flights go through the rigor of coming to zaria and all they are coming to do is apostle we want to sow into koinonia and we want to continue and you ask them why and the man will say i listen to one message say value not message say value but that value had grace and content in it to rise to a level where it can smash the devil worrying that man so the man listened to a message and as he listened to the message he fell asleep and in that sleep the message continued and jesus stepped in the jesus he fasted for two months to see he didn't see but he listened to one message and climbed the ladder of a grace straight into an encounter he would look for that person and reward him that was why nicodemus looked for jesus even in the night he traced him the bible doesn't tell us everything that happened there but i'm convinced he came with honorarium It's just my thinking. It's just my simple thinking. Forgive me if I sound arrogant, but there are some of you as you are seated right now, there are all kinds of envelopes in your pocket. You are waiting for us to share the grace so you will queue and spend time only to come and sow into my life. Now, I'm sorry that I'm the one saying this and I'm not by any way manipulating you, but it's the truth. Now, you are thinking, how will somebody stand for hours just to drop a seat to a man, whereas you beg the same person while he was on the queue and he didn't give you transport fare? Are you seeing how it is? There is no reward until your value rises to a point where it can be served with excellence. As a man of God, nobody will place a demand on your grace just because you are prayerful and just because you study the truths that you communicate must the impact 
of that word must be felt in the lives of the people when it is done clear the way for the rewards that will come now you don't preach because of money don't get me wrong however it is impossible my brothers and my sisters to be valuable to serve that value with excellence whether you sell it or give it free you must be rewarded it's a law by the grace of God and the privilege of God's hand God has granted me the opportunity to raise too many people around this nation and around the world for me to beg for bread my children will never beg for bread even if I give bread to them and go to be with the Lord because people have been raised and wisdom is justified by her children your value has not raised anyone yet you want life to reward you you see how unfair it is just because you think you are a graduate holding a certificate does not mean that what have you given to the world that you demand value from it's amazing how your relatives will not give you money but they will run for a meeting and kneel down waiting for a man of God to pass so they will drop money you beg them for rent they didn't give you yet they are carrying four times that amount to give someone who is already blessed nobody really blesses a needy person they bless valuable people you must translate yourself from this needy mentality to a mentality of value that even if you don't have money in your pocket you can say in the name of jesus i'm coming for koinonia there is an anointing that is coming i'm not falling for nothing every time i fall i rise upgraded in the spirit and a day will come i will put something in the realm of the spirit that will cause the nations to place a demand on my grace jesus climbed up the mountain and people followed him up the mountain to the point that his influence threatened the scribes and the pharisees they said no this guy is stealing the show if we don't do something about him he will destroy us koinonia let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you are gathered here every week by the grace of god because we continue to strive to communicate truths to you that are applicable to every facet of your life it's a formula that is unbendable you would hear testimonies here you would hear testimonies every week that the word produced results nobody leaves what works did you hear what i'm saying nobody leaves what works no sir the world does not have too many things that are working so the options are few there are not too many things working in this life so when you find what works you stay and pay whatever price it takes to stay that's why the presence of god is 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 is, is a is a place and a zone you must desire and hunger for forever because you see the presence of god does not just make you heaven bound it makes you valuable it truly does look at my life the presence of god that's where you find the anointing so while i'm worshiping in his presence i love i love i love your presence i love i love you think i'm just wasting time singing but while i'm singing and worshiping in his presence there is an elevation in the spirit a new anointing son you have this anointing and that but you don't have this one let me introduce this in your life and i'm there just worshiping the same way you are typing the letter in your office me too i'm i'm i'm, I'm doing all of that the same way you are reading for a promotion exam and all of a sudden i step out and i see a grace that was not upon me yesterday now the grace has come meaning the person who will not bless me yesterday can now bless me because there is a grace that can now add him to the list of the blessings i love i love i love your presence i love i love I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. Shalabakato Saladash. I love your presence. I love, I love. 
person. Forget about bringing a valuable person down. You don't know how needy this world is until they find true value. All this issue of trying to bring people down is a joke. When you find especially value that is stamped with the hand of God, only God can bring that person down. I'm telling you this. Koinonia will continue to grow from glory to glory. It's not just some recitation. The formula has been given. The scroll is not closed. The seals have been broken. It's been opened. We have seen it with our eyes. The things men do not have. How could they resist it? An anointing is not sold in the market. An anointing is not stored in a bank. The government does not have it. So how dare you trivialize the power of God upon the hand of upon the life of a man and then assume it's not there. Your need will force you to remember that only the anointing can solve it. Listen, you are seated now in this place. To some of you, you are attending a service. I wish you could see in the realm of the spirit that you are climbing ladders. Some of you travel from far. You just thought you came for a service until you go back on Sunday on your little prayer group and you say, let us pray fire. And you see fire everywhere to an extent that you say, what is this? What is going on here? And everybody descends. They will stop calling you brother immediately. They, they will have to invent a name to show you you have risen in the spirit. Let me tell you this. It's good to know how to cook. It's good to know how to do business. But my brothers and my sisters, be anointed. This is real value. Be anointed. Have something upon you that no man can buy. The same way you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. He said, Thou anointest my head. Give us that scripture. You did not anoint my cup. The goal is for my cup to run over but the oil came on my head and the result showed in my cup it takes more than a good profession to prosper it takes more than a good skill to prosper there is only so much reward you can get from that angle ah but when his hand comes upon you blessed is the man that my god finds and puts grace upon you your life will be a wonder you will you will walk upon gold as dust i'm telling you this listen let me tell you all these money money things you see people chase around most people don't have any money they just have enough to solve their basic needs so they look rich they are poor And yet that's what distracts a lot of people but when you stand say lord put something in my life put something upon me i i don't know why people don't pray that prayer oh god shorten my journey i don't have time shorten my journey let there be an anointing on my profession listen 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 come emeka you are a doctor come watch this we are going to pray this gentleman is a doctor when someone is sick they will meet you for injection or meet you for whatever now your profession does not determine who you bless the anointing on your profession will make a rich man come as your patient you see now that one is not mbbs again that one is the anointing influencing your possibilities so a day that no doctor is around the billionaire comes and the Holy Ghost, not your profession, pushes you there. You have a restaurant, you are a chef, congratulations. But not being anointed, you will continue to cook for poor people for wherever. They will finish eating and then back in and say, I don't have 10 naira, I don't have 15 naira. But when the anointing comes upon it, the anointing will make you go to visit your auntie 
just when a politician is there and he says i'm looking for someone there is a meeting and he says ah, my daughter is here that one is no longer your skill that one is a grace from heaven that comes upon men listen you can be a preacher and have a good understanding of scripture mighty exegesis of scripture and they keep inviting you to different places wonderful you will be blessed but the eye of your helpers will never meet you until there is a grace that grace is what will take your seed your message whatever you represent to the ears of the man that can announce your ministry how would i have risen from zaria here how many public address structures do you have i'm not on facebook i'm not on any social media as a person it's not everything that is just good preaching it's not everything that is just mm -mm. there is an anointing that announces it's called an oil of gladness it can take men and make you above your fellows please listen the financial tsunami that is coming to destroy men a time will come where you will see people i'm not i'm not i'm not a, a sadist but a time will come where everything you have every other person has it you are educated they are educated and then the other person contending with you is a tribesman of the director what then is your advantage there are things when you have only the rich look for you there are things when you have only the poor look for you there are things when you have only sick people look for you there are things you have only those in need of legal issues look for you there are things when you have only hungry people look for you but there are things when you have all men will seek for you all men all men God designed it that way so when Jesus was about to start his ministry having done everything he did the Bible says he went to the wilderness and cried there 40 days 40 nights fasting and he returned in the power of the spirit and then Acts chapter 10 tells us how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power the Bible says he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed something humorous happened today i i have never been to shiloh as a person and i was just sitting today and all of a sudden i got a text the pastor in charge of registering pastors in shiloh sent a text to my phone and said man of god are you coming we want to arrange your reservations and this i said what is this now listen i'm just saying it to encourage you i don't know that man from adam are we together now yet there is somebody who will not stay in the secret place but will keep lobbying you will go there and be roaming around the gate like a thief they will say please join the members or sit in the overflow listen once you are struggling to be accepted in a realm and they are rejecting you it's a sign that the anointing has not opened the door go back don't force yourself just go back when you try to enter as a pastor you see other pastors and you are fighting for acceptance and they are saying mr man we invited a b not you will consider you one day stop making a mockery of yourself go back to the secret place and say where is the god that puts oil on the head of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters when what comes upon great men comes upon you there is no door that will remain closed thou anointest my head with oil is someone ready to pray tonight this is the value that i brought for you that if you if god grants you access to the anointing and you can serve that anointing with excellence there is no door listen you don't have to leave your profession it just needs to be anointed many of us are educated but our certificates are not anointed many of us are skilled but your skill needs to be anointed psalms 126 psalms 126 126 we're going to read three scriptures 
we are going to pray and we will cast out devils heal the sick speak over our destinies that's why we are here tonight no power will stop you listen let me tell you that you came here alone is a sign that victory brought you here you know most most people don't know how desperate satan is in stopping men from getting where the anointing is if you left even if your house is outside here if you left your house and arrived here successfully it's a sign that you were guided to be here hallelujah he said i desire once again to come to you but satan the wicked devil still hindering men from getting to their place of destiny when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream verse 2 then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing then said they among the hidden the lord had done great things for them the last verse verse 3 it says the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad in fact let's add one more verse verse 4 turn again our captivity O lord as the streams of the south or the negev let's go back to verse 1 when the lord not if the lord when the lord that means that it is something that is for sure according to the law of times and seasons there is a season allocated the bible says when the lord turn again the captivity of zion when so it is for sure i don't know about you but for me it is for sure not if not if the lord when the lord turn again the captivity of zion the second thing I want us to observe from this exhortation is that captivity is real. The Bible did not leave us in ignorance as to the fact that even Zion can be in captivity. Zion, the city of the Lord. Zion, the place of God. He said the captivity of Zion. There is something called the captivity, not a captivity an exact kind of captivity he says when the lord restored the fortunes of zion restored the fortune the point i'm trying to communicate is that the word turn around talks of restoration the captivities of zion he said he did it in such a way that we were like them that dream you have to study someone who wakes up from a dream How many of you slept hungry and in the dream you saw a buffet? <laughs> you woke up with the passion of that dream only to find out that it was a dream. But in that dream there was no limitation. You could be in Lagos and be in Joss in one second. Realities that happen in the dream realm. Are we together? Physically you knock but in a dream you can cross over to the other side. He said the nature of that restoration, it was in the similitude of them that dream. When the Lord turned again the captivity. So captivity is real. Notice he said the captivity. The captivity. There may be many kinds of setbacks but there are a few that can hold a major um, it can it can yield a major blow to men and women in their lives listen not every operation of darkness affects you the same way is that true there are times even physically you can have a little sprain on your finger and it may not affect you much but there are times you can be down with typhoid fever that one is a kind of captivity that can keep you down so the bible says the captivity the captivity the fact that you are the zion of the lord does not mean it should be strange as it were god would have said when the lord restored their captivity but he was honest enough to say it is the captivity not of israel of zion go and find out about zion 
it is the city of the great king that even in heaven it was not a shame that there was war there so the issue is not the war the issue is that there is a system for victory the very fact that war could be conceived in heaven where god is should almost be enough embarrassment war in heaven the fact that satan could even orchestrate it and it had could mobilize people where did they hold the meeting in heaven that god didn't see where did satan convince a third of the angels and there was war in heaven and there was war in heaven and all of a sudden michael the archangel rose up judged satan and there was no space for him but there was war that's the most important thing second shock and jesus died the word died the bible i love the fact that the bible doesn't hide some things and the word died And Israel was in Egypt read your Bible and see how things that were not very comfortable happen and Abraham the beloved of God Abraham for 25 years was waiting and trusting for a child yet in Genesis chapter 12 a prophetic word was upon him that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed whoever told you that every time challenges stand before you is proof that you don't have faith it may not be true there was war in heaven where the fountain of wisdom resides there was war in heaven where the all-seeing eye of god god does not see dimensionally he filleth all in all yet there was war the first message tonight is a message of hope do not be ashamed when you realize that there is something that is in the similitude of captivity in front of you apostle i love the lord with all my heart but why are doors closed over my family last time i met someone he told me that it is a shame as many of us would say it's an embarrassment to redemption but the word died the word was killed by men engineered by satan himself the word hung on the cross and he gave up the ghost to give up the ghost means you were tired and your body could not take it again the word died there was war in heaven we don't know what part of heaven but there was war in heaven but the thing is not the war it's not the captivity it is when the lord turned even if he did it once and you got into another trouble he can turn again 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 it wasn't just once god delivered them their lives were full of his deliverance they would escape from some people before they rest another wicked nation will arise and god will turn again who told you he turns just once that he did it in much miracle service don't you know that for every level you rise there are still some kinds of giants waiting he turned the one of march let him do the one of june too when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream verse 2 then our mouth he didn't say then we laughed our mouth was filled with laughter like your mouth is filled with food our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing then said they among the hidden come on breakthrough that unbelievers must talk about <sighs> breakthrough that even a herbalist would discuss and say even in our practice we have not seen this kind that God turns it around in a way and a manner that it must compel discussion. You know, if it is the Lord's doing, it must be marvelous. If it's a man's doing, it's natural. If it's Satan's doing, it's alarming. If it is the Lord's doing, it must be marvelous. He said, then said they among the hidden, the Lord. So they know 
they know who can do that kind of thing. The Lord had done great things for them. The nature of that turning around is called a great thing. That even the hidden know that this dimension of result, it is the Lord. When Julius Berger builds road for you, they put a big symbol, B, bam, they stamp it. Is that true? So that when you are passing and you see the building, when you are in doubt, is it PW, is it this, you just see it. They put it there. This is our architecture. When you throw a block up and it falls down and does not break, you know where it came from. There is, when it breaks, you also know where it came from. So God says, I will not only do a work. If I do it generally, they can confuse it with your intellect. They can confuse it with one connection. I will do it in a way that no man, no man, it is not the miracle, it is how it is produced. God can reveal something to you by January and slowly bless you and by by june or july you can have it it will be difficult to give him praises because you say ah but come to think of it i, I read this book i applied principle abc so god says hold on let me show you how that your life can be recreated in seven days and then when he does it he says go and find which other god is able to bring that kind of salvation there were other ways Israel would have gotten to Canaan, but God passed them through the Red Sea. When they got to the sea, they stood there. And God said, I want to do a work. It has to, you see, the glory is not in the result. The glory is the excellency of the method. That God does it in a way that even you, you stand in awe and say lord i know you are a great god but this one no look what you've done to my mother in one month look what you've done to my ministry look what you've done to my life there are miracles that happen in the bible men try to argue it but there were others the bible said was a notable miracle listen in this miracle service god does not just want to bless you he wants to bless you in a way he wants to anoint you in a way. He wants to restore you in a way. The key word there is the way he will do it. Hallelujah. The way he will do it. You lost your ATM card and lost your wallet. You are already praying and say, Lord, raise me. And, or let somebody bring it. Then you go back to your home and find it on your bench. Now, that's not restoration. That's doing it in a way that only God would have done it. Are we together? By the time your enemy calls you with a seed and says, just to let you know that the God you serve, I want to serve him. That's not just salvation. That's salvation in a way that will make an onlooker know that this one is the finger of God. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing and they said among the hidden the lord had done great things for them verse 3 the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad the lord has done great things for us before we even started testifying the unbelievers were already there and then verse 4 says turn this is a prayer now turn again our captivity that means a corporate people can be under captivity. Nigeria can be under captivity. A state can be under captivity. But they can cry and say, Lord, turn again our captivity. Like the streams. You know how you divert water? That when you are watering a garden, or whatever it is, irrigation farming, that water can be going this way and you can block it and make it go this way. God is saying, my life was going this way turn my life around in a way and a manner that people say ah we already predicted that by next week you should be in the pit what are you still doing here and i'm standing here only because and they say we even gossiped it 
we had concluded that when you are in the pit this is what we will say we have written the testimony and while we were discussing we didn't know that God can turn again the captivity of a man many people don't believe God we believe our problems we are used to it that every time God speaks we just hope faith is not hope listen carefully faith Bible faith is not hope it's not hoping God will do it faith is based on a revelation God will convince you and tell you I am able to do it and then activate your spirit through the revelation of his word for you to know that this thing is true that God can turn a man's life around I spoke I was in Port Harcourt day before yesterday yesterday we came back today and I spoke on something I wish I had the time to teach you it was on Ebenezer the mystery of help from God hallelujah he said my help comes from above I don't know where your own comes from but my help my help not our help I lift up my eyes to the hills because that's where kings live and in every hill and every palace there is a system of protection but uh, uh, this this situation defies the help that comes from the hill he says my help cometh from above cometh from above Cometh from above. Sometimes when God wants to step in and help you, he keeps quiet while everyone mocks you because mockery gives God glory. He allows men to vent their foolishness and he says, are you done? He says, now let me show you what happens when the creator of the ends of the earth decides to step in. As a man, if I like you, there are privileges you can have. When God gets up and dusts himself from his throne and decides to visit your case even you you will be shot are we together now that God can turn again the captivity of men I told you we are reading three scriptures scripture number two Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5 Habakkuk chapter 1 Ah, my spirit is fired up oh. God wants to visit somebody. Habakkuk chapter 1. Behold, ye among the heathen. Notice that the heathen must participate in that process for God to be glorified. He wants them to see. He says, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will walk a walk in your days, which ye will not believe. Though it be told you, there is something I would do that even you, the recipient, the only reason why you believe is just because you are the possessor of it. But ordinarily, <clears throat> I will walk a walk in your day. There is something I can do in your life that I can do in your family that you will sit back and say, my God. God has done a few things in my own life that even as a man of faith i've had to sit down to say god i fear you god did something in the red sea that made pharaoh look and say this god he is god god did something in babylon that made nebuchadnezzar he wrote a decree not to the people to god turn again captivity i will do a walk tonight I will change things your prayer point of years I will so answer it in a way that you will say Lord even if you answered it longer I would still be grateful but what, what is this and God says I did it suddenly lest you think I am so weak that it will have to take a long time <laughs> last scripture Isaiah 41, 10 solid verses we are going to read. 10 to 20, Isaiah 41. 
God is turning things around. Turning things around. Turning things around. When your clock refused to move, you fix it. Because it was supposed to move. And if your life has been brought and tied to time, then like the clock, the clock is a revelation of how your life must move. When clock stops moving, you fix it or throw it away. If your life stays in one place, it's a mockery to God, it's a mockery to you, it's a mockery to all who are connected to you, that your life, like the clock, must turn. 41 from verse 10 to 20. Fear thou not. This is a word for somebody. For I am with thee. Yes, in the midst of the pain, the disappointment, I am with you. The threat letter, I am still with you. A man gave a testimony, I think it was just something to encourage you, but I'm not sure it's a real story. But he held the hands of Jesus from that story, I'm told, and they were walking together in a desert place. And then he got to a point where he noticed from the vision or so that there was just the footprint of one man alone and then in the end of it he turned and told jesus he said why did you leave me we i there were four footprints but i got to a point where i saw only two and jesus told him that was when i carried you the footprint you saw was not yours it was mine i knew that your strength had failed you in that desert so i carried you while you were crying not knowing you were carried on the wings of eagles you wouldn't have survived it fear thou not do you know why god starts by telling you fear not because the truth is that life can make you fear no matter how bold you are the speakings of men versus the obvious results that you see in your life or lack of it it can shake even the boldest of us and he starts by saying fear thou not for i am with you he said be not dismayed another word is disappointed he said for i am thy god i will strengthen thee yea i will help i will help thee i will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness we are reading to 20 11. behold all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded he said they shall be as nothing and they that strive with thee shall do what that's where i got the scripture that anyone that fights you goes down instantly it says all day that okay let's let's just read 12. no no go go just just go back to thou shall seek them and shall not find them even them that contended with thee they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. that's it for i the lord thy god will hold thy right hand saying unto thee fear not why because i will help thee don't trivialize the help of god don't when god tells you i want to help you rejoice when god says i want to help you is the same thing um this guy is locked up here he wants to come up but this is stopping him and I say, I want to help you, meaning I am stronger than him, meaning I know something he doesn't know. I want to help you. He says, Fear not, O warm Jacob. Jacob, you are weak, I know. Why does he call Jacob a warm? It's not an insult, it's a description of your frailty. Fear not, O warm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee. Sayeth the Lord thy redeemer the holy one of israel reading to 20 15. behold i will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small thou shalt make the heel as chaff thou shalt fan them and the wind shall carry them and the whirlwind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel 17 when 
said the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for tests read it with me I the Lord stop stop when the poor and the needy when they get to a point where there is no hope of deliverance by them strength they know that by themselves and their strength they cannot bring deliverance the bible says i the lord will hear them i the god of israel will not forsake them 18. i will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of valleys and i will make the wilderness a pool of water i will make it i will make the wilderness a barren life i will make the wilderness a pool of water i will make a destiny that has no business flourishing a pool of water and the dry land springs of water two more verses 19. i will plant in the wilderness the cedar the shatter tree the mitel, the oil tree i will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together fruitfulness 20 the last verse that they may see and know and consider or wonder and understand together that the hand take it higher for me sing me that song take it higher 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 guys be sensitive that or Lord Gwagwaroso. Sing it just one time. Oh Lord Gwagwaro is turning things around. Oh Lord Gwagwaro is turning things around. understand together that the hand of the Lord had done this and if it cannot be done the Holy One of Israel had created it to create means to make out of nothing what needs to be moved should be moved what needs should be brought to be brought what is not there should be created 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 carry carry a a potato wrap it somewhere make sure that there's no air there's nothing leave it there for a few days in spite of the fact that there's no air it will still rot and when you open the rot, you will still see worms inside. How they got there is a miracle. That's the same way no matter how the enemy closes every access. God says, when did I start needing a runway? When did I start needing ladder to come to the earth? When did I start needing a loudspeaker for creation to hear me? I am creator. When God speaks, it doesn't matter where it is. Even if the bones in the valley of Ezekiel are under the earth, when his voice comes, echoed by the voice of the prophet, the Bible says, bone came out. Listen carefully. If you don't believe what I'm teaching, you are wasting your time here tonight. Take your eyes away from the mountains and say, Lord, you are going to recreate my life. There are things you will have to turn tonight around for me, like the streams of the Negev. When you read further, it says that those that, 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 that sow in tears will reap in joy. It didn't just say those that sow money. You can sow prayer 
and he told you the prayer to pray turn again my captivity like the streams of the Negev in the last few months I have been so passionate about calling forth the creative power of God to assist men I am learning afresh again after many years that God can help men no matter who you are if God does not assist you start crying because life will beat you down to your knees and veto whatever you think is a basis of confidence he said some trust in horses and some chariots but we there is there are a group of people that would trust in the name of our God I trust God tonight to change our lives I trust God tonight to move in a way until it marvels you it is not yet a notable miracle scattered here tonight are men and women alongside the challenges and the obstacles that mock God in our lives we have come from far and near many of us made tremendous sacrifices the question is do you believe that this God that we serve that this God can choose by his wisdom and by his love and mercy to visit a family to visit a man that God looks at you and says I have decided to come to you I've decided to hold your hand I've decided to lift you I've decided to give you a testimony God comes to a beloved sister and say my daughter they have laughed at you now they are ready to laugh with you like Sarah I have come to uphold you I have come to wipe your tears I have come to prove to men that the rejected stone can become the chief cornerstone you are called of God but it's as if you are not called no anointing no results no testimony no one placing a demand on your grace but something happens to you God says I'm coming to assist you hold my hands God assists us by asking us to give him our hands do you know why because until your hand is holding him he cannot move you see let me tell you this your hand holding him is proof that you trust that he will move when your hand is still busy trying to walk it your way you don't qualify for his help when he wants to help you he says place your hand upon my hand and you are now going to use your faith from hence not your hand let me be the one using my hand to clear the way let me be the one to make a way in the wilderness let me be the one to make pharaoh give you gold i can give you gold by creating but let's make a caricature out of pharaoh pharaoh you are the one who will give that gold There is a name God is called, the Father of Spirits. Understand the revelation behind that name. Every human being is a spirit, he resides in a body. But God is the Father, the author. Every spirit hailed from him. It was out of his spirits that every spirit came about. And the Bible says he is the Father of Spirits. Meaning it is within his power to manipulate every human spirit to cause his purposes to come to pass any and every I spoke to a man this morning before leaving um, very touching the man stood he had been trying to see me and then at the airport he was there with his children and I looked at the man all his children one could not pay his school fees for four years final year had written his last exam but because of school fees they are taking him back to 200 level because he couldn't pay the poor girl, the daughter was there, the man was there standing, and I said, this is the signature of Satan. When Satan comes to your life, you can know he has a signature. He will stamp it on your family. Do your worst. He will stamp it on your destiny. Do your worst. Stamp it on everything around your life. And when God comes to, he will use his hand and erase it and said, let me put my own and see who, what devil will come to take it out of you I prayed for that man with all my heart I prayed for him passionately in that state of poverty and penury the children and the man they put together a seed I, I, I said can I ever accept this I, I collected the seed I prayed with all my heart and then I said look I I place favor may your seed become a tray let me put something upon it for you it's called the favor of God 
go back with this anointing and let it turn your life around that's the works of darkness some of us are seated here right now our loved ones are in such kind of chaos Satan when Satan does a thing you don't need to ask who did it he does it so clear that men will know it's his finger please don't confuse the works of darkness with the works of God the works of darkness is darkness the works of God is light that's why we're here to disagree with Satan and insist until we see his power prevail over our lives is God speaking to us tonight the captivity of Zion the captivity in your family the captivity in your life what is that obstacle that stands before you on the next level you see it but to touch it it looks like there is a resistance there is a limitation we are going to pray are you ready to pray tonight and then I begin to minister to you by the Spirit oh God turn again my captivity like the streams of the naked lift your voice and cry Believe me, brothers and sisters, when you pray, God hears you. Turn again the captivity. In Prakatosika Paragade, Zakata, Ekuta, Breke Teke Padaba Katabaregenimo, In Pata Pretes Teke Badagadabosa, In Preke De Sakata, Reke Teke Teke Teke, In Prakatosika Pata, Reke Te Balagadosh. Hallelujah. I like you to begin to mention by faith the things that must live your life this night, not tomorrow. Open your mouth and pray. Go ahead. Shut <laughs> Hallelujah. Someone sent a few weeks ago, someone sent a very humbling text message. Please help those under the anointing there. A few weeks ago, someone sent a very humbling text message to my phone. Out of seven graduates, nobody has ever been called for employment. Not even, not, I'm not talking of. I'm, I said, interview. Seven graduates. No one called for interview. And the gentleman, according to what he sent me, he said he went to bed in the night to sleep and he just slept. And that's what he said. He said he saw me in the dream. I came and I prophesied. It was like a koinonia service. I laid hands on him and I mentioned the name of an organization that will call him. True story. He said he woke up physically with an alert from that organization to come for an interview. Now, I don't know whether or not they have given him the job. I don't know that part. But that's God at work. From a dream, prophecy, you wake up physically with the alert. You didn't apply. Ah. Listen, listen. Don't let men fool you. This God, ba, let me tell you, when God decides to help you, don't tell him how he would do it. Your ways, his ways are higher, higher than our ways. His thoughts, higher than our thoughts. 
when when you see it's an act of faith to let god choose how to surprise you yours is to place a demand on his integrity by faith and let him choose how to rise and bless you you may be asking god for a cup of tea whereas he's coming with a hamper for you lord one cup of tea and i'm grateful and god says no if i give you a cup of tea man can also give you let me come with a hamper in a way that you will know this is me are we together three things i want to tell you we'll pray one more time number one god can act very fast he looks slow until he rises from his throne to help you listen to what i'm telling you don't get used to the fact that just because sometimes it looks like god is too slow god can act mysteriously fast i was watching a documentary i like watching documentaries um and on, on a, a, a national geographic channel and then they were showing how these animals all these these sea mammals how they eat one another and sometimes with lightning speed a giant creature can in fractions of a second just dissect another animal and i said wow so don't be deceived by the weight that it is a giant creature doesn't mean it is slow that your god is mighty that heaven is his throne and the earth is his full stool doesn't mean it would take him 10 years to bend down to touch you he can touch you from his throne and you will feel it from the earth god we're talking god here number one god can act fast so that you don't limit god and say lord i know you will act but um no problem no number two listen very carefully god can surpass your wildest imagination now it's difficult to understand but you must believe it god can surpass your wildest imagination he can he can so that it's good that you bring your petitions before him but that you allow your faith to expand to the capacity that can receive everything that god decides to give you and then number three satan and all the limitations that stand before you listen carefully have been defeated not will be defeated have been defeated what happens in a service like this is an establishing of that victory it's difficult to understand but you must believe this because the reality of our circumstances will not allow us to believe this is a fact but it's true because it came from the mouth of god himself that it is finished verdict is what we have come to enforce so that you don't stand and look at the limitation that stands before you and now begin to ask yourself questions but how will god do this promise how is god going to do this if god does it this way there's already a blockage here if god follows this way it will have to be five years before it happens if god uses this method my uncle already hates me and god says you only gave me three methods i have methods as infinite as my names i can use anything I can use a fish to give you coins. I can use a donkey to speak to you. I can use a bird to bring you bread. It doesn't always have to be men. It just has to be material bodies. I can use anything. Are we together? So tonight as we pray, why are we here? You have to understand. Number one, we are here. We are here to clear the way. The forces. Remember. There will always be forces that contend against the word of god we are here to challenge them because most times those forces stand our way they contend with prophecy when the force that stands against your destiny is cleared away you will be surprised how sometimes within minutes your testimony comes number two we are here to allow the anointing of the holy spirit to produce possibilities in our lives the anointing of the holy spirit is his force is his instrument for producing change he creates by his anointing it is his word but that word must be anointed are we together now the word of god without an anointing on it for 30 years could not heal anybody could not bless anybody the word just roamed around the streets of nazareth but when the word became anointed it became christos the anointed 
So the word of God is coming to your life. I want you to be very sensitive, whether it is the prophetic word, whether it's an instruction to pray, whether it is the deliverance session. Don't just watch people fall and roll and do all of that. Let your heart connect. Be angry. There is an obstacle for sure. You go to bed in the night and all kinds of strange spirits molest you. You get up and say, it's all right. How can it be all right? If it's all right, who invited them to your life? Good things about to happen to you all of a sudden. Your enemies reach your destiny helpers before you and they give a bad word that closes your door, recycles your pain again. And then for many of us, what you need is that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will call forth the men, the men component. God helps by bringing men. God can agree with you. Men can disagree. You will still suffer. God agreed for David to become king. Samuel refused. David remained in the wilderness until Samuel agreed. Men can stop your breakthrough. It's not just demons. Men can stop your breakthrough. And not all men are castable. There are men who are gates even though they are hedonistic. God doesn't cast them. He gives you access to their heart. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are some enemies you can't drive because they are still gates. Are we together? Lord, I'm ready for you tonight. Lift your voice and pray. pray Lord I'm ready for you this is my family hallelujah glory to the Lamb glory to the Father you are seated on the throne hallelujah glory to the Lamb Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the Hallelujah, say hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the Hallelujah. Glory to the 
let me do the singing. I'm going to sing this song once. I want those who are under the anointing while I sing. This instruction God is giving me. This same song. You guys have done your good music. Let me prophesy now with it. You'll be surprised to see what will happen in here, outside, as I'm singing this song. If that anointing finds you, as you come out here, begin to rejoice. Because it is strange breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Shabalakato Sabadasiata. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. 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 No power can stand it. Glory to the Father. The forces must let you go. Hey, hallelujah. There's authority in the song that I'm singing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb. Glory to my Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. They are leaving you now. They are leaving you now. I'm speaking by the Spirit. They are leaving you now. There are chains over you, leaving now. There are chains leaving you now. I'm ministering by the Spirit. There are chains are leaving you now. Even the lawful captives. Kabarakatos. Chains. I'm seeing chains breaking from the hands of men. Chains. Be broken. The worship team already prepared our hearts. I command the chains to be broken. By the authority of this kingdom. Be broken. Shabarakatos. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. I'm commanding chains to break. Bring them out. The anointing of the Spirit is breaking chains over flow one, two, three online. Chains. Chains of captivity. 
all kinds of bondages every force of darkness it's time for you to go it's time for you to go release their destinies hallelujah 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 glory to the father you are seated on the throne Now listen, God is giving me an instruction. Hold on. If there is any power associated with your family, you will know now by the fire that falls on you. This is what the Lord is telling me. I'm about to pray that if there is anything that is demonic, responsible for the challenge of your family, get ready now. Because I see a wind of fire moving from this place right there, outside. I declare it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the fire of the Spirit visit men and women and families now. Hold on. Listen, I'm still praying. Listen to me. The Bible says that Paul was at a place, it was cold in the night, and they put wood together. When they said the, a viper was there, but it could not be seen. But when they set fire on the wood, the fire exposed the viper. I declare Shabbatos Katadia by the fire of the Spirit, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Every viper hiding in any family, hiding in any destiny, be exposed now. Be exposed now. Be exposed now, Shantaikatosh. Be exposed now. Every viper, every snake, scorpion. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Where are the forces fighting your advancement? Forces fighting men's advancement. The Lord is judging them now. Judging them now. Judging them now. It's time for you to move forward. I command judgment on the forces fighting your advancement i command judgment on the forces fighting your advancement overflow one lift your hands please everyone in overflow one lift your hands the lord is ministering to me overflow one lift your hands there is a mighty deliverance that is coming there at the count of three overflow one i want you to shout jesus as you shout jesus i'm seeing gates with chains breaking are you ready now one two three bring that lady that lady going back
I'm looking at a lady, but in the spirit, I'm watching. I'm not saying you're a bad girl, my dear. All I'm seeing is a serpent. I'm not seeing a human being. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I expose that serpent now. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray a very interesting prayer. Don't mind me. Just allow me. I'm ministering under the anointing. I'm going to say exactly what I'm hearing in the spirit. And if it doesn't sound logical, don't worry. Just let me do the prayer. Snakes be judged. Snakes be judged. Snakes be judged. Snakes, serpents of the night, be judged. Serpents of the night, be judged. Serpents of the night, be judged. God is against you. Ebenezer, the helper of man, is against you. Snakes, I say it again. Be judged, be judged. No rest, no peace. Be judged. Snakes, be judged. I'm seeing a lady vomiting something. That's what I'm seeing in a vision right now. I don't know what it is I'm seeing, but in the name of Jesus Christ, God is releasing people. There is victory. God is helping people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire, not impartation fire consuming people's head and God is saying is restoration of lost glory that's what I'm seeing restoration something that used to be in your life and all of a sudden faded away I'm seeing fire coming on people's heads where are they oh God I stretch my hands now let the fire bring restoration 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 help them please Restoration, Kato Soda Batana. Restoration. I command restoration of every lost glory. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. All those who are out in front under the anointing here I declare every legal grounds upon which any spirit is operating in your life at the count of three by the mystery of the blood it leaves you now one two three go 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 out of their lives in the name of Jesus out of their lives when the blood speaks nothing else speaks again Victory by the blood of the eternal covenant. Elama Saba Sana Katoshia Magata. Victory by the blood of the eternal covenant. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family here. And I'm seeing that the father in that family, I don't know if he's out of pressure but went to a herbalist and they gave him something to go and bury in the house he may not even know it this is something that happened a while ago and whatever it is seemed to backfire when it came to money issues he didn't go and pay like give the herbalist whatever it is that's what God is showing me now and I'm seeing that because of that every door in that family everything just closed I'm going to pray Lord wherever 
whoever represents that family here whether inside or outside or online I'm praying right now by the mercy of the God of heaven whatever enchantment and activities of darkness invoked by those herbalists I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus who is Rebecca 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 like Becky Rebecca Rebecca I'm hearing a name Rebecca Rebecca You are seated on the throne Stand up You are Rebecca That's the person I'm talking about Come Stand up You are seated on the throne Madam Where are you coming from? You came from Abuja. Yes, I'm seeing program. you in a vehicle from Abuja yes, coming. You program. came alone? I came with my niece. And my younger brother and my cousins, they live in Zaria. You, One came from Kano. My you, but you came from Abuja? Yes, I came from What's Abuja. What's your name? Asma Rebecca. 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 Asmao. Come. It's time for your victory. Lift your hands. There is. Let her go now. I command the spirit oppressing you. You have come to Koinonia. The place where God dwells. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power that fights you. In the name of Jesus Christ. This woman is going to return with very strange testimonies. Mama, you are Rebecca. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you. The Lord has located you and end comes to your captivity. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Samnaka. Please help this woman. Are they, are they, this mama, are they Rebecca? Mama, are you Rebecca? Rebecca. Huh? Rebecca. You are Rebecca, mama? Okay. This one, too, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Sometimes God gives a word and then I'm, I'm talking to you now, my dear. Where are you from? Samnaka. State of origin. Region. Kaduna. You are from Kaduna State. Yes. Come, I want to pray for you. There's trouble in your family. You are in need of the power of God desperately. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end this captivity. The lady that is going back, tap her, just tell her to look at me. Just look at me. It's over now, in Jesus' name. All of you are Rebecca. My dear, salvation is coming. An anointing is leaving me to you. And it's for your family. From next month, you will start hearing strange testimonies. Open doors. Mama, you are Rebecca. Who else is Rebecca? All of you are Rebecca. I'm going to pray for you. I, ma, I have to pray for you. Yes, ma. The spirit of death is following your family. I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands over our mommy. Help her, please. I command the spirit of death. One of you here, I'm, I don't know which of you, but I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you in front here. There's one of you, an anointing is coming on you. Um, the Lord is bringing deliverance. Right now, you can't stand it. It's, it's the power of God. One of you, an anointing is coming on you for strange deliverance. Mama, be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Hi. There's, there's serious witchcraft. Excuse me, just a minute. I command that spirit to leave this lady now. You must go. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. He, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ um, this, this mama doesn't speak English I think she speaks Yoruba 
She speaks Yoruba. Who is? Ejimin, can you come or someone? Just tell her the Lord is bringing breakthrough. You can whisper it in her ear. It doesn't have to be. It's your mother. Come. The Lord is breaking. The Lord is breaking a yoke. The yoke of delay. Ah, as I just mentioned delay, I just saw fire. Just left me. As I just mentioned that word delay. I'm about to pray on it. But since, since I just saw the fire, let me just do what I saw in the spirit. The spirit of delay. Be judged now. The spirit of delay. I say it again. Be judged now. The spirit of delay. Shadow Kasudosh. The spirit of delay. Be judged now. The spirit of delay. Open your heart. Open your heart and pray. The spirit of delay. Be judged now. Any kind of delay. The spirit of delay. Be judged now. The spirit of delay. Be judged now. Be judged now. Be judged now. Breakthrough for your family. God is bringing breakthrough. Mama, God is bringing breakthrough. Your son will tell you in Yoruba. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's something on you. That makes wrong people come to you. I have to pray for you. Are you. I'm looking at you. Very bad people come to you for bad reasons. No serious person. You know what I'm saying. I don't want to start bringing long. It's not. There is something. There's a spirit in you. That attracts those kind of people. They will never pass you and go free. They must turn back. And this thing is destroying your life. Hold my hands. Shout Jesus. Look at this. So you just think it's just love. You are in love with a beautiful girl. It's not just love. Out now. Go. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. I've not seen this in a long time. The Lord is showing me a map again. And this map is going to Kogi State. I'm laying my hands now. Kogi State. Let that anointing begin to find people within that region. Now I'm praying. You come within that region. Let the anointing find you. Deliverance for that region now. Shatakoto Seketea. Kogi State. Deliverance now. From any strange power. Any force of darkness. If you don't know your state of origin and you are from there, you can know it now by the anointing. In the name of Jesus. Anyone from that region. That's the region the anointing of the Spirit is focusing on now. I command deliverance now. Shabatakato seketebas. Shabrakato skata. The strong men within those regions. Let God's people go now. Release them right now. The spirits of the grave. The spirits of ancestry. I curse you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Father. Please lift your hands. We'll pray for the sick shortly. But there are people here. Why God brought you tonight is to receive the healing anointing. I just saw it. I don't know where they are. They are in almost every overflow. There are representations. Lord Jesus, anyone who you brought here to receive the anointing for healing, let that anointing come. This is your moment now. Receive it now. Ordained by God. 
receive this anointing today ordained by God to receive the grace for healing I'm seeing that anointing coming on two people in worship team two people worship team that anointing that grace hallelujah glory to the Lamb the anointing to heal the sick you don't just pray for the sick there is an anointing I say it again the anointing to bring healing to transport the power of God from the throne to their lives receive that anointing right now hallelujah hallelujah mama come please please help her she's not running by herself it's under the anointing mama i see a new dimension of healing coming on you a new time just hold her a new dimension of healing in the name of jesus christ ah this mama is going to pray for the sick and you'll be surprised there is an unusual anointing upon you for barrenness for barrenness i'm praying help that lady please in the name of jesus receive that anointing mama in the name of jesus christ the grace the grace in the name of jesus christ the lord is asking me to stand in front of you just to stand in front of you that's the instruction i'm getting the light shines out of darkness god is removing something from your chest i'm seeing something leaving you i don't know what this is but in the name of jesus christ I stand in front of you be free right now be free right now be free right now all of you who are standing here in the name of Jesus I agree with you and I declare come let me touch your child I'm going to pray for favor when you hear me say favor lift your hands and receive you need it in your life too many people have taken advantage of you even as I'm seeing people laughing that's that's why I just stopped this is very strange a strange anointing is a sign of victory in the spirit that's what the Lord is showing me strange it's an anointing very strange anointing you see if you are not spiritual and you don't understand why god does these things it's not showmanship the bible says he's, he filled their mouth with laughter i read it for you you can't stand it it's something that laughter you see is warfare it's not just laughing hysterically i release it the families that is for the individuals that is for laughter is a weapon in the spirit it disarms the enemy so my dear when i'm praying for favor please you stand to receive it eh? but i bless your child in jesus name hallelujah there's someone your family member has been missing this is more than one year who is that person because the person who is missing is still alive let if she's the one who is missing don't come and tell lies here. Are you sure? My father, I Your talked father. to you about it before. You told me about yes, it? Yes, and you remember. prayed. Where, what happened? When last did you see him? 2016, August, Saturday. He told me he was coming and that was the end. From where? From Edo State, Benin. And you've not seen him? We've not seen him since date. We are still in search of him. How about you? My cousin sister. Your cousin sister is missing? Yes. All these people, they are, Shaka, leave them. Shaka, Shaka. Their loved ones are just find out once there don't please if, if you are not related to the people don't please don't come here we're going to pray generally if you if you do it like that there will be chaos how about you yes, sir. my in-law your in-law yes sir 
What do you mean your in-law? From the United States. Okay. All of you, your loved ones are missing. Your loved one is missing. Who is that? Your younger brother. Missing. missing. Since when? 2014. 2014. Yes. They've not seen him. Yes, sir. You see how Satan works? How can somebody leave home? For you to sympathize with people, put them in your shoes. Imagine that your child left home and said, Mommy, I'm coming, and never comes back. I'm prophesying to you three years. Your child went and said, Mommy, I'm coming. Until today. Come, Mama. Give her the mic. Hold on, Mama. Your, ch your child is alive. This boy, you see, are they twins or is he the same person? This one. This is the only one. What but happened to him? He, he left school. I put him in APU. He refused. Polly, he refused. He's busy taking drugs, going about lying to people that his parents are dead. All over times, they call me in the police station or your state, Port Harcourt, that is arrested. I don't know how they set him free at times. You see, our honestly, let me speak towards young people. It's, it's okay, Mama. It's your only son. Your only son. One, one, okay, one. That's it's all. Only, yes. You, that's how you know it's a spirit. Because the devil sat down and saw that these boys will bring joy to the mother. And then the devil decided to, if, will the lady not marry and go? Huh? He's very intelligent. In school, he was in the APU. He left the school and went away. What's his name? Awal is his name. Awal. Awal. Yes. Hi. We are going to pray. Like a month ago, from what God is showing me, this boy had problem with police. They were smoking. In the they were take, smoking he, Igbo. He, Police he came and packed them with he his friends. Drugs. This is what Mama. Let me talk to you now. I'm the one talking to you. I know. You see, when you see me pray about this, this drug, this thing, that drug is a spirit. It's more than with due respect to doctors and this thing. It's not just because of the physical thing it gives. I'm telling you, that thing is a spirit. If you have a child or you know someone that takes that thing, counseling is not the way out. There is a real spirit that must be casted out. Are we together? Some of you here right now, seated in this program, you love God, but that, what, what they, they call it, codeine, again. Uh, mama, 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 don't worry. It's, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Because you see the way these boys are desperate for this money. They will coin every kind of story and beg you and lie. You give them 100 naira. You give, once you give them enough to take this thing, they will disappear and go and rubbish it. Let me tell you, there is none of those boys that is bad in himself. There is none of those girls that are bad in themselves. It's the influence of spirits. Nobody will be killing himself and eating death like that every day. Mama, you have come for miracle service. God will do something about you in your situation. Who is this, my brother? It's my mom's younger brother. Your for mom's over, younger brother? Yes, for missing. over 10 years, we have not seen him. 10 years, yes, you've sir. not seen him. Oh, pray. How about you, sir? My elder brother. You're the brother. pastor that came from Warrior. Yeah, from okay. Delta State. From Delta State, okay. Uh, my elder brother was missing about 20 years ago. We really forget, forgot about him in Ghana. He was in Ghana and he's, and he's yes, missing. Yes. Okay, let me pray with you. It's an instruction. Because some of the situations now, they are even very difficult situations. I, I don't know in myself whether some of them are alive or they've gone to be with the Lord or whatever. But my job is to pray. Because God has instructed me to pray. Mama, please stop crying. You came here with faith in your heart. Let me tell you, you must eat the fruit of your labor. And I'm saying this, I'm using this mother as a point of contact, not just to every mother here, but to all our mothers. The force that wants them to labor 
and die in pain go to their graves in pain we challenge that force now in the name of Jesus Christ it's an error to sow and someone reap in the name of Jesus every true mother that has labored to sow may they reap in the name of Jesus Christ Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying. Everyone here whose loved one is missing and alive and walking in the earth here, I connect them back now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you. I connect them back now in the name of Jesus. Jesus called Lazarus. And when he called Lazarus, he came out. I call them by their various names in the spirit. For as long as they are alive and walking on this earth, I put a desire in them to reconnect to their families. Those who have been jailed because, you see, some of these people, let's be very fair, some of them, they, they smuggle their way out of the country. They go to Libya, they go to all of these places. Some of them go to do prostitution, unfortunately. Some of them go because they want to make money. Someone tells them, come, travel, and all of that. So some of them, they may even be in cells. In some of these places, you may never know. But regardless of the case, for as long as they are on earth, we cry for mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, may they be reconnected back to you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Please go back to your seat rejoicing. Go back to your seat rejoicing. Go back to your seat rejoicing. I hope someone is holding that person shouting there. My friend, come. You are doing your ushering work, but I will pray for you before you go back. Eh? Look at me. I'm looking at you. The Lord is telling me to tell you August 7th is a month that breakthrough will begin in a very strange way for you. Hold my hands. August 7th, don't forget, write it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this gentleman. You have revealed to me August 7th. I prophesy to him. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God change your life within that time. May God change your life within that time. May God change your life within that time. I'm seeing a ring, a ring in the spirit. I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. I'm seeing a ring. Ordinary, when you see a ring, you would think maybe God is saying he's bringing marriage. Maybe marriage to families. But this one, God is delivering people from spirit entities with all kinds of fraternities over their lives. Right now, I stretch my hands. That's why it's important to let the Holy Ghost interpret things. I know that many of you may not believe what I'm praying, but you just allow me to pray. Every spirit entity covenanting to you as a husband or as a wife, I set fire on this ring I see in the spirit. Be free from them now. Let this be free now. I command those spirit entities to release you in the name of Jesus Christ for the gentleman I command freedom for you now from any entity laying claims over you you go to bed and they come to you in the night they try to molest you they try to sleep with you they can use faces of people you know or you don't know, or animals. Anyone under the sound of my voice, who any stranger comes to him in the night while you sleep, fire is coming on you now. 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 I command that they let you go now. For some of us, when good things are about to happen, 
just when you are about to get it you go in the night and someone comes to sleep with you in that dream as soon as you wake up from that experience no matter what it is it's gone whether it is favor whether it is breakthrough fire is still speaking i'm praying at the count of three oh god you who is a mighty deliverer i pray that your anointing will search for these ones and bring them deliverance now one two three let there be deliverance for you now deliverance for you now from any spirit entity laying claims on your destiny hallelujah thank you Jesus this lady with lime yes you come no look at me look at me I'm talking at that one with you yes come where are you coming from Benway Benway State look at me look at this are you seeing she just stood there and while I was looking I just saw a spirit through her look at me and turn the face now it's very funny how these things work see one of the prayers you must pray in your life is for the grace of open eyes if your eyes are closed in this life and all that is open is your brain you will be in trouble open eyes is not something just for prophets it's one of the true riches of the kingdom you must cry that God will open your eyes. Not to see nonsense around, to see something that is destiny molding. Now look at this girl. How will I stand and see someone there and call her out? Imagine that this lady went back like this. To her she will now say, oh God, so this is how you didn't locate me. Sensitivity, discernment is a priceless spiritual gift. Sensitivity. It comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. It comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. Not wishing. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You activate your organs. You have to pray for a long time in the spirit. For your spirit to be heightened. To be able to perceive spiritual things. Otherwise you will get into all kinds of error. Wrong perception. That you have started seeing things does not mean they are clear. You must continue in the place of prayer until it becomes accurate. I just showed you the thing of ring now. Some of you may see that ring now and then tell somebody it's, it's not marriage as it were. You see it was something else but it's a ring. This lady has bad luck in her life. Very bad luck. I have to pray for you. She just came quietly standing. This I would have shared the grace. And the dear lady will go back. And then it will look as if God is not in the place. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing you cough. I'm seeing her cough. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. That she's beginning to cough. I don't know why, what is having to do with coughing. But in the name of Jesus Christ. Shatos let everything that speaks against you leave now this lady swallowed something in the dream. Someone came to her, gave her something, and she swallowed in the dream. If you ever say you like this girl, everything in your life goes down immediately. I'm not saying she's a bad girl. Please don't get me wrong. I'm teaching her something here. She's not a bad girl, but this is the operation in her life. There are people, do you know why we minister to people like that? This is what sometimes prophets see, that if they don't get discernment, they go around saying, someone now may not see this correctly and say this girl is a witch 
he's not exactly wrong in terms of saying that there is war associated with her life. You can come now and hold her hands as a businessman in two months of relationship. Everything goes down. And she knows she loves God. But if you are not discerning, you will now call the poor girl a witch. And everybody will start running away from her. She's not a witch. There is just a challenge. And then if you also say she's alright like that, and somebody marries her, that guy's life will be torn into pieces. This is the testimony of so many families. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. Human beings carry spirits. They carry presence. Father, liberty for her. The devil is already... Ah! Someone in overflow one and overflow three is being delivered from fibroid. 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 I just saw a hand reaching into someone's, like someone's stomach to bring out something. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of fibroid, we pray for the sick shortly. We'll be very fast at it. Fibroid is gone now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone. Can we pray for the sick very quickly? Now listen, I want you, if you are coming here to be prayed for, come full of faith. You don't have to say what is wrong with you. If you are not asked, don't worry. And all of us who are going to pray for the sick, we are going to make this very fast. Are we together? Now, um, as always, overflow one and part of overflow two. Part of overflow two. You will come in here, come and stand in front here. Uh, no, no, not main auditorium, sorry, not overflow one. The main auditorium and then half of overflow two. Allow them to come here. Overflow one, move to your projector stand, please. The remaining part of overflow two and the, those standing at the roadside, you can move to the projector stand. Overflow three, all of you trusting God for healing, please move to your projector stand. We have about 10, 15 minutes to do this very quickly. While we are doing that, ushers and uh, I don't know, whatever, whoever needs to help them, submit your prayer request very quickly. If you have your prayer request, you are coming out here for healing, come. Come. There is a God that heals. Please, if you have your prayer request, you can lift it up, write it very quickly. No, no, the ushers will collect it. Ushers. And, and then if, if there are not many, PR department can help them. Let's make it snappy. Or any other department can help them. Let's, let's make it very... We're going to make it very fast. Please and please let there be orderliness once you have been prayed for. We may not have time to take testimonies. We are just going to pray very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see. Um, Ejimi, Ejimi and Benga, overflow three. Two of you can go to overflow three. Um, let's see. Pastor Alpha and promise overflow one outside pastor femi and kenny overflow two let's do it like that I'll, I'll pray i'll pray for the ones here by myself hallelujah let's pray together in the name of jesus everybody say amen, amen. father we declare corporately that your healing power will begin to flow heal the sick deliver the oppressed and in the name of Jesus, bring yourself glory by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Please make sure while we are praying, the ushers also come to these people in front so that they can have it. We'll be very, very fast so that we finish on time. Thank you, Jesus. You're the name above every other name. Hail Yahweh. Great.
Everything I've dropped here in the name of Jesus becomes an answered prayer. Please, ushers, make sure make sure that we have everyone's request here. Those online, connect by faith. I'm praying now. Make sure you are praying. Prophesy. Are you praying? Father, I believe. I believe. If the devil didn't stop your request from getting here, he will not stop it from being answered. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be miracles. I anoint this request. I anoint them in the name of Jesus. I anoint them by the power of the Holy Ghost. I anoint them in the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders, breakthroughs, impossible situations. Turn things around, oh God. You have declared that you are turning things around. Turn around everyone's captivity. Turn around everyone's captivity. Let there be testimonies. Break the spirit of delay. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Every time we do this, we do this one as instructed. And then number two, because it's an opportunity to have everyone's desire and everyone's request here. Father, I stand upon these requests by faith. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Lord, these requests are a representation of the needs of your people. I stand, O oh God, in the name of Jesus on their behalf, and I cry, let fire fall upon this request. And I prophesy to you on account of this request that the Egyptians you see today, in the name that is above all names, may you see them no more forever. I say it again that the Egyptians you see today, may you see them no more forever. 
some of you before this month is over you will return with strange testimonies it's still two days or a day or so to the end of the month between now and even tomorrow may you return with strange testimonies whoever must be judged for this prayer to be answered may it be so whoever must receive a conviction about you between tonight and tomorrow or till whenever for this prayer to be answered we declare it so in the name of jesus and so shall it be in the name of jesus christ put your hands together for jesus lift your hands to receive the prophetic word now we're rounding up the miracle service is not complete if you don't receive a prophetic word prophecy is powerful it's powerful it creates I release testimonies to your life let me say it again because many of you didn't believe it I release testimonies to your life I release testimonies to your life. I release testimonies to your life. I release testimonies to your life. The key that you need to open the door for the next level may be handed it over to you in the spirit. The kind of favor that you will need to testify in the name of Jesus may the God that gives favor to men grant you favor in the name of Jesus for those in need of restoration I prophesy receive restoration for those in need of an urgent miracle a miracle that has to happen on time otherwise it will cost you i stretch my hands in the name that is above all names let it happen to you even within 24 hours let there be that miracle. for those who have never had an opportunity to laugh every time you want to laugh something comes that must force you to cry i announce to you the season of your laughter begins tonight where you have been despised i place an anointing upon you and tonight i call you beulah and hefzibah in the name of jesus christ anyone here in ministry and things are not working you are doing your best but it's just not working receive the grace to begin to walk in a greater dimension of signs and wonders anyone here in business in the name of jesus you are entering the season of your best days from now. Anyone here trusting God for a job, for you or for your loved ones, between now and the next miracle service, return with your testimony. Return with your testimony. Return with your testimony. Every challenge plaguing your family, not just you, a family thing, everyone is crying from it could be patterns could be whatever it is I stretch my hands right now and in the name that is above all names I bring those patterns to an end now for those trusting God for financial miracles your miracle the area you are trusting God is directly in the area of finances I agree with you and I release my faith may the God that prospers men surprise you everyone here called barren or standing in for any barren person return as a mother of joyful children the anointing that makes things work the grace for performance i release that grace upon your life everything that is upon your hand now i command it to work in the name of jesus christ and i announce to you let july from july 1st to july 31st 
may it be named a month of strange miracles strange wonders strange miracles strange wonders strange miracles strange wonders in the name of jesus christ tonight for some of you as you sleep may my god show you the secrets of your destiny in the name of jesus christ every area where you are trusting god to give you divine direction in the name of jesus every spiritual mechanism that god can use to communicate to you i declare that let it be so for you revelation after revelation finally whoever needs to arise and help you they already have the capacity all they need is the willingness i pray for you let me tell you breakthrough is very easy when your helper likes you your helper has the means but he needs to have the heart some have the heart but they don't have the means you need both i prophesy to you in the name of jesus that any man and woman position around you that has the ability to help you i pray that god will put it in their hearts to help you i speak over your life a new level of spiritual encounters i say it again a new level of spiritual encounters for some of you i'm holding my bible as a prophetic act because some of you have divorced this book not willingly but by reason of the operation of spirit the only time you open your bible is in church or koinonia right now fall in love with this bible fall in love with the word of god an appetite for the word of god i release upon you every kind of spiritual laziness you say i wake up to pray by 12 and sleep till 8 in the morning or you get up to pray and five minutes you are snoring back it's an attack i cast that spirit over your life fresh fire upon your prayer altar in the name of jesus christ We declare peace over Nigeria. We declare peace over the north. We declare peace over Plateau State. We declare peace over Kaduna State. We declare peace over Zaria. Specifically for Zaria, we fortify the spiritual borders of this city. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that no orchestration of darkness will arise to disrupt the peace and serenity of the people. May the angels of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, secure the borders of this city. Secure the borders of the north. And we pray that the perpetrators of wickedness be judged by God in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are here and you need Jesus desperately. Keep standing, please. You need Jesus desperately. Desperately. You're saying, man of God, I need Jesus as a matter of urgency. I have seen the value. I have seen the usefulness of Jesus in my life. Hitherto, every time I hear about Jesus, I i resent him i scorn and laugh at those who talk about him but from tonight's meeting the holy spirit has convicted me and i testify and with all humility i declare that i need him second category of people man of god i love jesus with all my heart but i know that i need a strengthening in my spiritual life things have gone haywire if god does not help me there will be no way out for me you belong to these two categories overflow one overflow two main auditorium i'd like you to walk out here quickly overflow three i'd like you to run to your projector stand very quickly i'm counting one to five and we're done one god bless you appreciate them koinonia they are coming two you're still indecisive it's not good for your destiny jesus i love you i want to make a genuine decision for you three 
please if they are coming from other overflows clear the way for them you are running to jesus don't be ashamed no man condemns you you are before his throne of grace to obtain mercy to obtain grace we are all products of his mercy and grace four please come quickly quickly double up apostle i'm not sure whether i'm born again or not join them join them very quickly i remember coming out for an altar call but i i honestly don't know the name of what i'm doing now join them quickly join them quickly koinonia is this the best you can do for them jesus said ye must be born again salvation is non-negotiable listen let me encourage everyone koinonia is not the only platform for genuine salvation the first mission of this ministry is massive salvation of souls we must seek and save the lost not just save the lost when they come to us we must seek them are we together because many of them may not be in a position ordinarily where they can receive salvation we seek them through intercession we seek them by engaging them in the conversation that leads them to Christ. God bless you. Lift your hands, all of you. Some of you are crying. You are standing before the Lord. Honestly, the Bible says, whoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Say this loud after me. You are making a confession to the God of heaven. Say, Jesus. Say it again. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. That you are the Son of God. Tonight, I declare that I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my destiny. Therefore, I declare that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my King. I hand over my life and everything about me to you and to your Lordship. I receive eternal life. I receive the Spirit of God and I declare from today until forever I belong to Jesus I declare that I'm a child of God the grace to walk in victory is mine amen keep your hands lifted Jesus thank you father we give you all the glory for drawing these ones no man can come to you except you draw them I pray that the grace that keeps men, let that grace keep these ones. The grace that lifts men, let that grace lift them. The grace that secures them, let that grace secure them. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the grace to walk in victory be given to you. You will move forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Congratulations. Thank you so much for this bold decision. Please, I'd like you to follow this gentleman waving his hands. Just follow them in concert. All of you, there will be a group of people to just talk and pray with you very quickly. All of you, God bless you. Let's honor them. Let's appreciate them. We believe you in my... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God. Our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.